Мы можем начать работать, так я понимаю. Уважаемый господин президент, дамы и господа, переговоры с президентом Соединенных Штатов Америки господином Дональдом Трампом были current situation and prospects of their Russia-US relations. And the key questions are on the agenda. Everyone agrees that uh, our relations are going through a difficult phase. And there are no objective reasons to justify the strenuous relationships. The Cold War uh, ended and the era of ide ideological confrontation is in the past. Today, both Russia and the US are facing completely different challenges. A dangerous disbalance in uh, international relations, a regional crisis, international criminality, uh, economic problems, ecological problems and risks. And we can only manage all of those by through joint effort. Today's negotiations reflected our mutual desire to improve the situation. To, uh, to set the first steps for improving our relations and um, for coming back to the previous levels of uh, international understanding. As the largest nuclear powers, we bear particular responsibility for international safety. And we believe it is important to reinstate strategic level dialogues on all levels. As largest nuclear powers, we are responsible for international security. We believe it is important to start the dialogue for strategic stability and non-proliferation of arms. And uh, we have passed uh, a number of uh, specific proposals uh, to President Trump on this matter. We believe it is necessary to continue our joint work on all areas of the military, um, military cooperation, handling the uh, situation uh, in relation to the uh, ballistic protection uh, program and also placing armaments in space. We would like to continue our cooperation in the area of fighting international terrorism and I would like to point out that our Special services are working quite successfully, and our most recent successful example is our cooperation with American experts uh, within the framework of the World Cup, which ended yesterday. And also, it is important to move to a systematic um, mutual cooperation in the area of uh, uh, international security. It's important to note that our positions are not identical in many areas. However, we've got many overlapping interests. We also discussed about regional crisis. We talked about Syria. In relation to Syria, resolving the situation in Syria could become um, an example of how international conflicts can be uh, removed and settled. 
and we could cooperate in the area of removing humanitarian crisis in the area. We have all necessary ingredients in order to continue our cooperation on settling the conflict in Syria. Compliance with the Treaty of 1974 about the separation of forces, about separation of forces of Israel and Syria. This will bring peace to Golan Heights and bring a more peaceful relationship between Israel. Господин Президент уделил этому сегодня особое внимание. Хочу подтвердить, что Россия заинтересована в, таким, в таком развитии событий и будет придерживаться именно такой позиции. Таким образом, будет сделано направление установления справедливого и прочного мира на основе резолюции 338 Совета Безопасности Организации Объединенных Наций. In compliance with the respective resolutions of the Security Council, for instance, the Resolution 338, we are glad that the Korean Peninsula issue is starting to resolve. To a great extent, it was possible thanks to the personal engagement of President Trump, who opted for dialogue instead of confrontation. You know, we also mentioned our concern about the withdrawal of the United States from the JCPOA. Well, uh, the US, our US counterparts are aware of our posture. Let me remind you that thanks to the Iranian nuclear deal, Iran became the most controlled country in the world. It's submitted to the control of IAEA. It effectively ensures the exclusively peaceful nature of Iranian nuclear program and strengthens the non-proliferation regime. While we discussed the internal Ukrainian crisis, we paid special attention to the bona fide implementation of Minsk agreements by Kiev. At the same time, the United States could be more decisive in nudging the Ukrainian leadership and encourage it to uh, work actively in this. We paid more attention to economic ties and economic cooperation. It's clear that both countries the businesses of both countries are interested in this. American delegation was one of the largest delegations in the St. Petersburg Economic Forum. It featured over 500 representatives of American businesses. We agreed, me and President Trump, we agreed to create a high-level working group that would bring together captains of Russian and American business. After all, entrepreneurs and businessmen know better how to articulate this successful business cooperation. We'll let them think and make their proposals and suggestions in this regard. Once again, President Trump mentioned the issue of the so-called interference of Russia in the American elections, and I had to reiterate things I said several times, including during our personal context, that the Russian state has never interfered and is not going to interfere into internal American affairs, including election process. Any specific material, if such things arise, we are ready to analyze together. For instance, we can analyze them through the Joint Working Group on Cybersecurity, the establishment of which we discussed uh, during our previous contacts. And clearly, it's past time we restore our cooperation in the cultural area, in the humanitarian area. As far as I think you know that recently we hosted the American congressman delegation, and now it's perceived and portrayed almost as a historic event although it should have been just a current of affairs, just the business as usual. And in this regard, we mentioned this proposal to the President. Um, we have to think about the practicalities of our cooperation, but also about the rationale, the underlying logic of it. 
and we have to engage experts on bilateral relationship who know history and the background of our relationship. The idea is to create an expert council that would include political scientists, prominent diplomats and former military experts on both countries who would look for points of contact between two countries that would look for ways on putting the relationship on the trajectory of growth. In general, we are glad with the outcome of our first full-scale meeting, because previously we only um, had a chance to talk briefly on international fora. We had a good conversation with President Trump, and I hope that we start to understand each other better, and I'm grateful to Donald for, for it. Clearly, and there are some challenges left when we were not able to clear all the backlog, but I think that we made the first important step in this direction. And in conclusion, I want to point out that this atmosphere of cooperation is something that we are especially grateful for to our Finnish hosts. We are grateful both of our countries. Finnish people. We had direct, open, deeply productive dialogue. Went very well. Before I begin, I want to thank President Ninisto of Finland for graciously hosting today's summit. President Putin and I were saying how lovely it was and what a great job they did. I also want to congratulate Russia and President Putin for having done such an excellent job in hosting the World Cup. It was really one of the best ever, and your team also did very well. It was a great job. I'm here today to continue the proud tradition of bold American diplomacy. From the earliest days of our republic, American leaders have understood that diplomacy and engagement is preferable to conflict and hostility. A productive dialogue is not only good for the United States and good for Russia, but it is good for the world. The disagreements between our two countries are well known, and President Putin and I discussed them at length today. But if we're going to solve many of the problems facing our world, then we're going to have to find ways to cooperate in pursuit of shared interests. Too often in both recent past and long ago, we have seen the consequences when diplomacy is left on the table. We have also seen the benefits of cooperation. In the last century, our nations fought alongside one another in the Second World War. Even during the tensions of the Cold War, when the world looked much different than it does today, the United States and Russia were able to maintain a strong dialogue. But our relationship has never been worse than it is now. However, that changed as of about four hours ago. <clears throat> I really believe that. Nothing would be easier politically than to refuse to meet, to refuse to engage, <clears throat> but that would not <clears throat> accomplish anything. As President, I cannot make decisions on foreign policy in a futile effort to appease partisan critics or the media, or Democrats who want to do nothing but resist and obstruct. Constructive dialogue between the United States and Russia affords the opportunity to open new pathways toward peace and stability in our world. I would rather take a political risk in pursuit of peace than to risk peace in pursuit of politics. As President, I will always put what is best for America and what is best for the American people. During today's meeting, I addressed directly with President Putin the issue of Russian interference in our elections. I felt this was a message best delivered in person. Spent a great deal of time talking about it. And President Putin may very well want to address it and very strongly, because he feels very strongly about it, and he has an interesting idea. We also discussed one of the most critical challenges facing humanity, nuclear proliferation. I provided an update on my meeting last month <coughs> with Chairman Kim, 
on the denuclearization of North Korea. And after today, I am very sure that President Putin and Russia want very much to end that problem, going to work with us, and I appreciate that commitment. The President and I also discussed the scourge of radical Islamic terrorism. Both Russia and the United States have suffered horrific terrorist attacks, and we have agreed to maintain open communication between our security agencies to protect our citizens from this global menace. Last year, we told Russia about a planned attack in St. Petersburg, and they were able to stop it cold. They found them. They stopped them. There was no doubt about it. I appreciated President Putin's phone call afterwards to thank me. I also emphasize the importance of placing pressure on Iran to halt its nuclear ambitions and to stop its campaign of violence throughout the area, throughout the Middle East. As we discussed at length, the crisis in Syria is a complex one. Cooperation between our two countries has the potential to save hundreds of thousands of lives. I also made clear that the United States will not allow Iran to benefit from our successful campaign against ISIS. We have just about eradicated ISIS in the area. We also agreed that representatives from our national security councils will meet to follow up on all of the issues we addressed today and to continue the progress we have started right here in Helsinki. Today's meeting is only the beginning of a longer process, but we have taken the first steps toward a brighter future and one with a strong dialogue and a lot of thought. Our expectations are grounded in realism, but our hopes are grounded in America's desire for friendship, cooperation, and peace. And I think I can speak on behalf of Russia when I say that also. President Putin, I want to thank you again for joining me for these important discussions and for advancing open dialogue between Russia and the United States. Our meeting carries on a long tradition of diplomacy between Russia, the United States, for the greater good of all. And this was a very constructive day. This was a very constructive few hours that we spent together. It's in the interest of both of our countries to continue our conversation, and we have agreed to do so. I'm sure we'll be meeting again in the future, often, and hopefully we will solve every one of the problems that we discussed today. So, again, President Putin, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Господа президенты, сейчас журналисты смогут задать по два вопроса, российские и американские. Мы начинаем с российских журналистов, с кремлевского пула. Пожалуйста, прошу вас, представляйтесь. 